Hello, welcome to this Aviation Concepts Ground School video. In this episode, we're going to discuss the primary flight control surfaces and how using proper trim simplifies the art of controlling an aircraft. It is important to note that this video should not be used as a replacement for legitimate flight instruction from a certificated flight instructor. This video is being created as an informational supplement to my popular DCS World tutorial series, and while the concepts I discuss and demonstrate may help viewers understand these aviation concepts in more detail, I present the information in the context of a flight simulator, in this case the previously mentioned DCS World simulator, and all content should be discussed with a flight instructor should you choose to incorporate it in real-world aviation. All fixed-wing aircraft are controlled by three primary flight control surfaces. The elevator controls the pitch of the aircraft, or moving the nose up and down to climb, descend, or maintain level flight. The ailerons control the roll of the aircraft, or banking the aircraft left and right for gentle turns, and the rudder controls the yaw of the aircraft, or the horizontal rotation to correct for crosswinds, the turning tendencies of the aircraft at various airspeeds and power settings, and to maintain coordinated flight in all attitudes. We're going to assume in this episode that you have at least a basic understanding of how the primary flight controls work to control fixed-wing aircraft. This episode is all about trimming those primary flight controls, what trim is, how and when we set the trim for a specific flight control, and why trim is essential to master if you wish to become an efficient and proficient pilot. In short, trim is a pilot-controlled adjustment to one or all primary flight controls of an aircraft to alleviate the amount of pressure required on the control inputs to maintain a desired flight attitude at a specific aircraft speed and performance setting. The best way to explain this is with an example, and the simplest example in this case is to describe a type of trim that nearly all fixed-wing aircraft have, elevator trim. The elevator is used to set the aircraft up for a climb, a descent, or just maintaining straight and level flight. To take off, you first set takeoff power, accelerate down the runway until you reach your rotation speed, then you add back pressure to the control input to pull the nose up and initiate a climb from the runway into the air. Often, you want to climb at a specific airspeed that is the best rate of climb to get your cruising altitude as efficiently as possible. This best rate of climb is known to pilots as VY, and this can be summarized as the velocity that will get us to our desired altitude on the y-axis in the quickest amount of time. The best climb rate is calculated by aircraft manufacturers and listed in the pilot operating handbook for whichever plane you are planning to fly. According to the DCS World P-51D manual, 170 miles per hour is VY for this aircraft. To maintain an airspeed of 170 miles per hour while climbing, you need to add a decent amount of back pressure to the control input. If you are climbing to a significant altitude, you'll be pulling back for a pretty good chunk of time. Wouldn't it be convenient if there was some way to adjust the elevator to hold a specific nose-up climb attitude so that you don't have to keep pulling back on the controls? That convenience is called trim. In the TF-51D P-51D takeoff example, you would rotate off the runway at an appropriate speed, accelerate to at least 170 miles per hour before increasing your pitch to maintain that speed. Once you reach an appropriate altitude, you can adjust your propeller RPM and manifold pressure, and then you can trim the aircraft to be tail heavy using the trim dial on the left side console until you no longer need back pressure on the control input. The aircraft is now trimmed for a climb at 170 miles per hour. And other than minor control inputs to maintain the pitch of the aircraft, the aircraft will hold this attitude and thus the airspeed. This is known as trimming for airspeed, and it is used in all phases of flight. Once you reach your cruise altitude, you will want to level off and maintain level flight at a specific cruising airspeed. As you level off from your climb, the aircraft will naturally gain speed as the thrust from the engine is no longer used to keep the aircraft climbing, and is instead redirected towards propelling the aircraft forward. In this case, you will be pushing forward on the control input to maintain level flight. I think you can guess how to alleviate this constant pressure on the flight control. That's right, we're going to trim the aircraft to be nose heavy. Just like in our initial takeoff climb, we are going to spin the trim dial, but this time we're going to spin it forward to make it nose heavy, until the aircraft no longer requires significant forward pressure on the controls to maintain level flight. At this point, we may need to adjust our manifold pressure slightly to maintain the desired airspeed at level flight. Any time you change a power setting or the aircraft's attitude, you should evaluate the trim of the aircraft and adjust it as necessary. Some aircraft also have rudder trim. These are usually multi-engine or larger sized aircraft, or higher performance aircraft in the case of the TF-51D, P-51D. In fact, in the TF-51D or the P-51D, it is recommended that you set between 4 to 6 degrees of rudder trim to counteract some of the left turning tendency that the aircraft has while it is accelerating down the runway. We will discuss where this left turning tendency comes from in a future video. 
There are also a few aircraft that have aileron trim, such as the TF-51 or the P-51D. This helps you counteract any adverse banking caused by the torque generated by the incredibly powerful engine to maintain a level flight attitude. So what happens when you spin the trim dials? The answer is surprisingly simple, but may be exactly the opposite of what you expect. If we look at the primary control surfaces, in this case we'll focus on the elevator, we can see where there is what looks like cutout flaps along the trailing edge of the controls. These are trim tabs, and they work by using the pressure of the airstream traveling around that primary control surface to adjust the angle of the control surface, thereby removing much of the input required to maintain a desired flight attitude. When I rotate the elevator trim dial forwards towards nose heavy, you might expect the trim tab to move down to adjust the shape of the control surface and cause the elevator to deflect air in that direction and push the nose down, but in fact the opposite occurs. Rotating the trim dial towards nose heavy raises the trim tab. The trim tabs themselves are not large enough to adequately change the airflow over the control surface or lead to an adjusted flight attitude. What they do is stick out in the airstream flowing around the elevator and the increased pressure against the tab causes the control surface to move in the opposite direction. By pushing the trim tab up into the air moving over the elevator, the pressure against the tab causes the trailing edge of the elevator to move down, thereby angling the entire control surface to give us a more nose-heavy attitude. And if we push the trim tab down into the air moving beneath the elevator, the pressure against the tab will cause the trailing edge of the elevator to move up, thereby giving us a more tail-heavy attitude. The trim tabs on the rudder and ailerons work in the same way. So now that we have a better understanding of what trim is, how the trim tabs affect the primary control surfaces, and when we should be evaluating and adjusting the trim of the aircraft, let's go and practice in our T-51D Mustang, which is positioned and ready to go at Kabaliti Airfield on runway 25. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our rudder trim down here. We're going to make sure that we have it set to 4 degrees right rudder. You can go 4 to 6, as mentioned previously. I like 4. I tend to see that it doesn't overcorrect me to the right too much. So I've put in the right rudder trim in order to counteract the left turning tendency of the aircraft, but the aircraft is still going to want to bank to the left. We're going to go into left turning tendencies in a future tutorial. But in this case, you're going to be noticing that I'm going to be holding right aileron as well. As the aircraft speeds up, the left turning tendency becomes less pronounced, and I'm going to slowly let go of the right hand aileron input. We're going to take off. We're going to accelerate to about 170 miles per hour, somewhere between 170 and 200 miles per hour. We're going to set ourselves up for a climb attitude, and then we're going to trim the aircraft to climb at between 170 and 200 miles per hour. Once we reach an altitude of about 10,000 feet, we'll level off and retrim the aircraft as it speeds up. So let's get started. I'm not going to go into detail about what I'm doing to take off. We're going to cover that in a future tutorial as well, but you'll at least get to see on the control display what's going on during a takeoff. I'm pulling the joystick all the way back to maintain a locked tailwheel. I'm going to put in full manifold pressure. We've got full RPM already set. As the aircraft gets up to about 50 miles per hour, I'm going to neutralize the control input. And then as the airplane takes off, I'm going to correct for the left turning tendency. Watching the airspeed, it's alive, 50 miles per hour. Neutralize the stick, 100, airplane is taking off. Correcting for the left turning tendency. Get our gear up and accelerate. 170 miles per hour, 180 miles per hour. Start nosing up. So what I'm going to do is get configured for climb going to reduce my RPM to about 2700. You'll notice this is going to cause the airplane to yaw a little bit to the right. So I'm going to have to input a little bit of left rudder trim. And I'm going to be pulling the manifold pressure down to 46 inches, which is also going to kick the plane a little bit to the right. So for that as well, I'm going to enter a little bit of left rudder trim to get that slip indicator centered at level flight. And I'm also keeping an eye on my airspeed, which is just about 170 miles per hour, creeping up to 180, and I'm trimming the aircraft so that I don't have to add any more control input to maintain this airspeed. And there we go. The airplane is trimmed to climb in pretty coordinated flight, 180 miles per hour. But it takes a lot of workload off of the pilot. You're not constantly fighting with the controls to keep the plane doing what you want it to do. The trim takes care of that. Now, as we approach 10,000 feet, I'm going to level out. And as the aircraft speeds up, I'm going to have to adjust the trim, slowly adding a little bit of left rudder trim as the ball kind of creeps over to the left. 
keep that ball centered, adding nose down trim, and also right aileron. That's pretty good. So we're at about 10,100 feet, climbing slightly, but the nose is coming down, so we'll start descending here in a second. We should probably average about 10,000 feet, which is great. We're at 280 miles per hour. One thing you're gonna notice uh, using a joystick, if you're using a button as opposed to a dial to adjust the trim, you can't get super fine control. So if you come down and look at these guys, if I give myself a little bit of a nose down via the joystick, you're gonna notice it's gonna move forward about, I don't know, a millimeter or more, a couple millimeters. So you'll notice it ticked forward a couple of ticks. And now you can see by the shadows that the plane is starting to descend. And you can also confirm that by looking at the vertical speed indicator. Now if I tap it backwards up, I gave myself a little bit more trim, and now the aircraft is going to start correcting up. Problem is, I probably overcorrected, and now the, the aircraft is going to nose high. So what I can actually do is I can use my mouse wheel on any of these and just roll one, one direction or the other. And I can get a little bit more fine-tuned control over how much trim I'm putting in. This is a lot more like what you would do in a real airplane, where you would just kind of very finely manipulate the control to get exactly the trim that you were looking for. Alright, so we're back. We've got Kabuleti there off of our left wing, about 45 degrees in front of us. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to start slowing down here and descending to pattern altitude. I'm going to pull my manifold pressure back to 15 inches. And I'm going to start my turn onto the left downwind for runway 25. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my nose either level or no more than a 500 foot per minute descent rate until I get to about 170 miles per hour. And as I'm doing this, I'm actually going to trim my nose up so that I don't have to hold the control. It looks like 1,000 feet per minute will get us there. So I'm going to, I'm going to do 1,000 feet per minute because that'll get me closer to 1,200 by the time I get to the pattern. A little bit more nose up. And the reason I'm going for 170 miles per hour is if we look at our little landing checklist up here, it says landing gear 170. So that's going to be the speed that we're going to want to deploy our gear at. No faster than that, we might damage the gear. Uh, and then flaps at 165. So as soon as we get our gear down, which we can do right now, it'll actually slow us down enough to also start deploying our flaps. But we're not going to put our flaps down until we're beam the numbers. But I'm going to go ahead and drop my gear. And you'll notice the nose wanted to drop there. I'm going to trim that nose up so that I don't have to hold it. I'm also going to give myself a little bit more manifold pressure, about 22 inches, so that I can maintain 160, 170 miles per hour in the pattern here. We're at 2,000, so I still need to descend a little bit. And there's the runway. Off of our left wing, we're in the left downwind for runway 25. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until I'm going to beam the numbers here. Looks like I'm going a little bit fast, so I'll drop my throttle a little bit. And that's close enough. I'm at 160 miles per hour, so I'll lower two notches of flaps, which will start slowing me down. I'm going to be keeping an eye on my rudder trim, my rudder slip indicator, and my airspeed primarily, but also the vertical speed indicator because I don't want to descend very much faster than 500 feet per minute. So we're at about 140 miles per hour, which is good. 500 feet per minute descent rate. We're gonna wait till the aircraft is about 45 degrees behind us, and we're gonna start our turn to the base leg. Keeping an eye on my airspeed in the turn and keeping an eye on my slip indicator as well. I'm going to add a little bit more manifold pressure. There we go, we're on our base leg. Gonna drop two more notches of flaps. And I'm going to start my turn onto the final. Now at this point, turning onto final, I'm going to drop my manifold pressure down to 18 inches. And I'm going to use my pitch to control my airspeed. If I need to, I can add manifold pressure or throttle and get myself back up to a faster speed if I need to. I'm going to try and maintain about 110 to 120 miles per hour on this descent leg. So we're at 120. Line myself up here with the runway. And at this point, it is very important to make sure that your rudder trim is set correctly. You need to have the ball completely centered. I'm going to drop the last two notches of flaps. Ball is centered, runway is in front of us, dropping to about 100 miles per hour. Give myself just a little bit more manifold pressure. I'm going to keep an eye on my rudder slip indicator. Any Big changes in power at this point are going to wildly affect the flight characteristics of the aircraft. So you want to be very, very light on the on the throttle. As I come over the threshold, I'm going to try and hold about a uh, 100 foot per minute descent rate. Just hold it off, hold it off, hold it off. And the airplane touches down. I'm going to now idle the throttle and pull full back on the stick. 
And what this is going to do is it's going to use aerodynamic braking to kind of push the aircraft down into the ground and slow it down without having to use wheel brakes. And at this point, since I'm holding the stick back, the tail wheel is locked, I can very gently use the rudders to kind of make sure that I stay kind of lined up with the runway. Again, you can't really see over the nose. Uh, in the taxi and takeoff tutorial that I'm going to be posting here in a couple of days, we're going to go over how you get, a, get around seeing around that nose. And basically what it comes down to is making S turns around uh, on whatever taxiway you're on. So at this point, I can center all of my trims and open up my canopy, shift C, and that fresh air feels really good. So I still haven't touched the wheel brakes. I'm just rolling. One thing I can do at this point is raise my flaps all the way. At this slow airspeed, they're not having any effect on the airplane. I can center my stick now. Unless I do anything really dumb, I don't think the plane's going to spin. At this point, I'm going to go full RPM on the propeller. We got the taxiway coming up. I can turn off my pitot tube heat. Turn off on the taxiway. And we'll go ahead and hold short of the main taxiway until we get clearance. get our position lights. We'll leave them on because we're still moving on the on the runway or on the tarmac. Since we're still moving on the taxiway. Alright, we'll do a quick cleanup checklist. Landing lights off. These guys are open. Flaps are up. All the elevators have been set. We've got our RPM full forward. Fuel boosters on. Fuel boosters on. Everything else is set correctly and we're good to taxi. So that brings us to the end of this lesson on So that brings us to the end of this lesson and demonstration on aircraft trim, when you might want to use trim, why it's useful, and what exactly is going on when you're trimming the aircraft. Hopefully you found this lesson useful and you'll be able to incorporate it into your own flying and simulation. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already, if you want more content of this style. And check out my Patreon if you want more information on how to support this channel. All of the links are located in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Smash that like button if you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, you can subscribe by clicking up there. And if you'd like to explore more of my videos, uh, including vlogs, other DCS World tutorials, etc., I've got a couple linked over there, and there are more on my channel.